morning, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. We've got people joining from all over the world today, including a good number of the Duke Lemur Center team. So a big welcome and shout out to you as well. My name is Jesse. I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. And for our new audience today, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. Now, it's been an epic couple months for us. We are on broadcast, I think, number 70 since the school year began. We've been all over the world. It's been a really exciting journey as we've had the chance to bring you some of the coolest scientists and explorers on planet Earth. But I am particularly excited today because we are going back with not only one of my all-time favorite groups, the Duke Lemur Center and Dr. James Herrera, but we are going to one of my favorite places in the world. Usually when we hang out with the DLC, we're in North Carolina. We get the chance to hang out in their lemur forest. It's exceptional. Some of the best broadcasts we've ever done. They're on our YouTube channel too. But today we're going back all the way to Madagascar, one of the most remote regions on this planet, one of the most special places on this planet, a place I'm lucky enough to have had the chance to go, and I'm so excited to introduce all you kids to today. So before I bring in James with like the best backdrop view of all time, I want to just give you a little sense of this because the Earth's an awful big place. A lot of us are here in Canada, the United States, in the top left of this, and if you look at the little red dot all the way down in the bottom there, that's how far we are away. It is quite the epic journey, even by modern air travel, to get to where James is joining from today, and we're in for a really special treat as we get to explore some of the community conservation work they do, the education work they do, and more in a really, really special forest. So, without further ado, James, welcome back to the broadcast, man, and uh, so nice to have you here. <laughs> Thank you very much for that very generous introduction, Jesse. I'm really excited to be able to, to join you all today and for you to join me here in a really special place, a place I'm lucky to call practically my backyard. This is uh, in a place called Antala in Northeast Madagascar. This is the Makulin Botanical Park. It is a private reserve. It was a local Malagasy person who just loves the environment and she wanted to protect this forest and so she over the years purchased it and restored it and has turned it into not only a reserve for nature but also a tourism site and my gosh who wouldn't want to visit a beautiful place like Makulin. This massive tree right here you know it's great that you can see it but I wish you could smell it it's called Ilang Ilang it's a famous tree that's used to make perfume Chanel number no. five if any of you know that one and not only does it have amazing trees but it's also an awesome educational opportunity for children from the region to come and learn about the environment and about lemurs. And today is World Lemur Day. So we're very excited to be celebrating lemurs. Here we have Ken Didier, who's a colleague and collaborator with the Duke Lemur Center. And he's teaching children from uh, the school of Via Maria about the value of lemurs for people. And he's here with the principal, the teachers. Here's Ertis, who's the local educator from Makulin. And I'm just going to be a fly on the wall and tell you what's going on. But the children have spent the last two hours learning about lemurs and the value of lemurs. I'm amazed every time we do these kinds of activities because the kids know more Cut out for a sec, James. Oh, no. See, we're learning so much about lemurs that it, it ends the broadcast prematurely, briefly. So we're going to get James back in just a second. And what we might do while we're waiting for James, because, again, we're broadcasting live from remote northeastern Madagascar, I might play you all a little clip of three minutes to highlight some of the lemurs in this special place. And hopefully by the time we're done now, we've got James back. The connection's really good. We tested yesterday for half an hour, and everything went perfectly. So we're going to play that. And... Uh, showcase a few of the lemurs in this special spot and then we will head back with James right after that. So give me a quick second to pull this up for everyone. I've got this up as a backdrop for you all and then we'll get back to our live stream. Uh, thanks for your patience everybody, really appreciate that. All right, here we go to Vancouver. This is from the Duke Lemur Center. <laughs> Thank you. 
Got a chance to see some of the lemurs, and I must admit, the first one, the silky shavaka, is my favorite. What an incredible, like, great white lemur, a really incredible creature. And as I was playing, as promised, we are back live with James. The connection's back good, so we can go head back with the kids who know all about those lemurs and back to the forest that smells like perfume. Because if that doesn't sound delightful, I don't know what does. So, James, welcome back. <laughs> How awesome. Hi there, Jesse. Thank you for bearing with me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Candidier was just in the process of explaining how, how awesome. we go about conserving forest. Yeah. And some of these children already have lots of great ideas what we should do. For example, Candidier points out that, you know, the people here, we rely on trees from the forest to build our home. So what are we going to do if we have no trees, if there is no forest? They say we'll be suffering because we won't have anything to... And what about the lemurs? They say also they'd be suffering. They would be skinny, they wouldn't be healthy. What happens if we hunt all the animals? They'll be sad. We might have lost James again really briefly. I'm so sorry for this, folks. Sometimes, again, when you're bringing broadcasts from uh, really far away places, we have a little bit of connectivity issues. But, again, we're emphasizing some of the amazing work that they do at Sava Conservation and the Duke Lemur Center and working with communities to educate people about the forest and the local animals. Now, this is something that we see in a lot of our broadcasts. Community conservation is making sure that community members have a stake in conservation. They want to be involved. 
Uh, people want to be involved in protecting the ecosystems and species that live near them. I know for a lot of our classes, you're really used to the idea of wanting to protect local creatures now. Uh, there's never been a generation with more awareness for the plight of creatures, habitats, and more than you. Uh, and it's been really exciting to see some of our classes over the years do amazing work to conserve the species near them and to raise awareness for the importance of species around the world. And again, this is what James Herrera, the entire team there are doing with local community kids. And so I'm going to highlight uh, their website again, dukelemer.duke.edu has a lot of incredible resources and everything that we've ever done with them is on our YouTube channel. We're going to hopefully, if we get the connection really working today, do a live tree planting as well. Uh, but you did have a chance to see some of the incredible lemurs there. So there are I think over 100 species of lemur across Madagascar. Um, again, I've had the chance to go to Madagascar, see lemurs in person. There's very little that you can have on this planet that's a more special experience than interacting or seeing one up close and personal. Uh, and Madagascar is a really, really special country in a variety of ways. Now, it looks like you've got James back. Um, and hopefully we can keep this going and talk to him a little bit about some of the work that they're doing. Um, even if we've got to just hang out with him for a second, uh, and highlight some of the stuff that the kids are learning. We're going to try and get as much of this in as we humanly can. But thank you for your patience, everyone. So, James, welcome back, part three. It's the third time the charm, I think. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. And thank you guys for all your patience. We're, the kids are really, really excited to share their knowledge and their experience. They're giving really great answers. Like, we need to protect the forest for ourselves and for the animals. We need to you know respect the animals that they are also living creatures that we should protect them so if anybody in the audience has questions they want to ask the children here i think it would be a good time to to have some exchange fantastic well miss Lou's class our grade four crew you've been joining us for broadcast all year i'm going to kick off with you guys in ontario do you have any questions conservation anything else there well, lots of hands up hey guys and, uh, Hi. Are they in danger? Ooh, are any of them in danger, James? Okay. Oh, we might have cut it again. <laughs> I'm so sorry, folks. Um, okay, here's what I'd like us to do as a group of classes. If you guys are willing to put some questions in the chat, then we'll have them lined up. Because James, again, keeps coming back. We're going to get him to maybe move, and hopefully the connection's a little better from where he is. I can answer this question while we're waiting, and hopefully we get our kids back very, very soon. But yes, many lemurs are endangered species. I do believe they're the most endangered group of primates in the world. Uh, there's a lot of threats to lemurs in Madagascar. Uh, people, it's a very impoverished country, so a lot of people clear forests to provide room for homes, for habitat, to raise livestock, to grow food. And as you chip away at that forest slowly but surely, it leaves less room for lemurs. Habitat loss is a really big cause of uh, endangerment and extinction around the world in general. And so in Madagascar, you see this in a lot of places. If you look at a sort of global satellite map of Madagascar over the last 40, 50 years, the loss of forest in the country is quite staggering. And so again, if you don't have a place to live, you end up with a lot of endangered species. Little lemurs, we saw a few of those mouse lemurs uh, in the pictures. They can survive in very small tracts of forest, so a lot of the mouse lemurs tend to be quite common still, but the bigger lemurs, those shifakas, the ones that swing from trees, jump from trees, uh, big howlers like the Indri, they're in a lot of, they're under a lot of stress. And so it's really important to conserve these creatures. And again, Duke Lemur Center does this pretty much better than anyone. Thanks for all the questions in the chat, folks. We do have James back. So we're going to periodically hop back and forth here. James, I wonder if there might be a better spot to stand. I know that sounds silly, but if there's a line of sight to the viewpoint, maybe we'll get a little bit of a better um, connection. But we do have a few extra questions. I answered the endangered one. We got from Miss Lynch's class how many species of lemur there are total. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to try and stay put. I was walking around too much. So first, I want to let the kids answer that one question because they had a really great answer. They say they won't be endangered. They won't go extinct if we take care of them, if we don't hunt them, if we protect their environment. So currently they are considered endangered, 
But as this young man said, if we protect them, they'll be safe for the future. What was your next question, Jesse? Yeah, the next one was just how many total species of lemur there are in the country. So <laughs> we're setting a trend here. Um, I'm going to find out some of our answers as we go along. And if we can get James back periodically for a few, we might be a little shorter than a normal broadcast, but I really appreciate your passion for lemurs, these great questions in the chat. And what we'll do no matter what, whether you're live, if you're on YouTube, if you're tuning into this and you have questions for the community about the lemurs, we will get you those answers no matter what. So if we can't take them live for connectivity issues, I promise we're going to answer absolutely everything. And I want you to email them to us all. I'm going to pull up our email address in a, just a second on screen. Yeah. So with our initials, at gmail.com if you email us and all our teachers have our emails of course we'll make sure that we get all your questions in um let's see so many questions oh these are fantastic i'm going to answer uh, ones that i can answer and some of the rest of the ones about biggest threats to the habitat how thick is their fur um does it make them too hot we've got some really great questions coming in the chat i'll make sure we leave for james and the community there uh, again thank you for your patience everyone Total lemur species over 100. Let's find out our total lemur species. One thing that's kind of neat about lemurs is that they are unique to Madagascar. So monkeys found all over the world, apes found all over the world. Lemurs exist only there. They were outcompeted in mainland Africa. So Madagascar is like the only place that we can find them, which makes it a really special sort of arc for some really unique species. James, you're back for a question. I'm not, I'm not walking around anymore. So. We have one student here who is, he's explaining every lemur he knows. He's already named 10 of them, but they already answered. There's 100 lemurs in Madagascar, and there's 25 species just in our region here in the Saba. Very, very cool. And then we got one from Ms. Wong. Uh, how do lemurs protect themselves from danger? What do they do if they're threatened? One of the things lemurs do is that they sleep very high up in the trees because their predators can climb trees, but if they sleep way at the very tops, it's harder for the predators to find them. So that's what one, one of the things that lemurs do. The other thing is that they are just very... I will note while we're waiting for this, <laughs> this answer, uh, the lemur predator is one of the coolest animals in the world, and it's one that almost no one's ever heard of. So the fusa, uh, which you can look up below, I'll try and pull up a picture of it actually while we're talking about it, but it's like a, a turbo mongoose mini cat looking thing. And it's this predator that leaps through the trees after lemur. So it's a really, really unique creature. It actually, to me, it looks like one of the most menacing predators and carnivores in the world for a, a smaller thing. Uh, so I'll pull up a quick picture of our Fusa here uh, that you guys can see this really, really cool creature. But yes, sleeping up high in the trees. And this is something, that, again, having been to Madagascar, lemurs are always high up. Like you're not reaching and touching a lemur. The lemur's 20, 30 feet up in the air, sometimes higher. The little ones, like the mouse lemur, they'll hide in really little crooks um, so that they can't be found. They're very stealthy. In fact, one of the big challenges with lemur work in general is finding lemurs. Uh, certain lemurs, like the eye eye, which some of you might be familiar with, are incredibly elusive. People can spend careers and see like one or two eye eye. So they're hard to find. I think James is getting to that with sort of their stealth and sneakiness. But this is the thing that goes after lemurs. And uh, I would want to hide from that thing too. It's very scary. Uh, great question, guys. Let's see if we got any more in our chat. What do lemurs eat? A bunch of things. There's uh, over 100 different species of lemur. And I'm going to leave James to answer this because he's back now. And we're going to see if we can get in our, our what do lemurs eat question together. Thanks, River. This is actually working fairly well. We're getting sort of like half a question, half an answer in every time. Um, <laughs> James, Thank you so much for your patience. Oh, all good, man. What do lemurs eat was our next question. They say leaves. They like to eat fruits, even like mangoes. They even eat bananas. He's seen a lot of, of the lemurs in his own backyard and his farm. But in the wild, they eat a lot of different fruits from trees. They eat the leaves. Some of them eat insects. And they were explaining earlier how they also eat pollen and... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we're back in the thing. On the mango note, 
The other day when James and I were testing, when we were able to walk around the whole forest, and it was amazing. There's a gigantic mango tree there. Like, it's a really, really special forest. Again, we talked about the perfume sort of base uh, with the Ylang Lang trees. Uh, but the mangoes there, the big fruit trees are just incredible. And imagine having the opportunity to have a lemur in your backyard. I grew up in Toronto, so our backyards are full of raccoons all the time, constantly. We actually make world news for having weird little uh, raccoons in our backyard. But having a lemur right next door is astonishing. And again... When you live in and near the forest, you're connected with wildlife in a way that a lot of us city dwellers aren't, don't have the capacity to be. So it's still really important to make sure that kids that might be in the city, might be in the heart of a city, don't interact with wildlife, get the chance to go to a forest like McAleen, uh, see this firsthand and engage with this. Uh, but if you do live in a place where you're running into animals, you tend to have a greater appreciation for them. And we've seen that reflected in some of the questions from the kids or the answers from the kids back from James. Um, let's see if there's any other big questions coming in. Ooh, I'm trying to think of other things for lemurs while we're waiting together. Um, we, again, I'm going to link this to all our classes at the end too, but we've done several programs live from Madagascar, some of the community conservation work that they've done. So I'll be sure to link those in as we follow up as well. All right, James is back. We're feeling it. Um, let, uh, oh, there's a great shot of the forest too. A quick question yeah. for you, James. And by the way, actually, I want to follow up with something, but you're asking the kids a question in the language there. What is the language there and how long did it take you to learn it? The language here is called Malagasy. It's their own language. It's a really beautiful language. Uh, it's very different from our own or Spanish or French. So it took me a very long time to learn. I've been working in Madagascar for 15 years and I learn something new every single day. <laughs> People still laugh. My grammar is terrible, but they understand and they're very forgiving. I wanted to just give you a view of this forest while we still have a little bit of reception. I mean, just look at this massive mango tree. It's, it's just really incredible what they've preserved out here. And this is the kind of forest that we've been hiking around all afternoon talking about lemurs. We're also getting ready to plant some trees here just in case our, res our reception doesn't hold out. We've got some trees here ready for the kids to plant in honor of their visit. Everyone, when they come, they plant trees and they make a little plaque to commemorate when they came. Some of these trees were planted more than 20 years ago. How cool is that? Well, by the way, the connection is really good where you are. It's actually the best and longest it's been anywhere, which is exciting. Um, All right, I'll stay put. We're coming, we're coming to the woods. Oh, this is so exciting. Um, a question for Miss Wongstas, what other animals live with lemurs? Inu ni karazna bibi mahita natiala a partire ni akumba. Nish ni lazawe. Inna. Huh? Anteli, bees. Ambulava, chameleons. In Nakua. Jovi Mahai Fusa Bay. Fusa is the native carnivore. That's the biggest predator of the lemurs, is the Fusa. If you have a chance to look them up, they're really cool. They look like a, a cross of a cat and a dog, but they're actually more closely related to a mongoose than anything else. Way ahead of you, James. I showed the Fusa already. It was very exciting. Right? Nice. Nice. Oh, the, the name of the tree they're going to plant is called Lamari, maybe in honor of their school, Avia Maria. <laughs> How lovely. Um, we actually got a great question uh, from Andy and Mr. Southard's class. How old are the babies before they can climb trees too? It depends on the species. Um, the smaller species, what we call the mouse lemurs, those babies are mature within three or four months and they're off on their own. But then the bigger species like the Shafaka, it might be six months before they're really climbing around on their own and more like a year or two before they're independent. There's something here that everyone's afraid of. In Maisie. I don't know what they're afraid of, but they say it's a, oh, oh, a wasp. <laughs> I better watch out. <laughs> uh, what other questions do we have? By the way, so chameleons sort of have their 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 epicenter in Madagascar. There's some of the most amazing chameleons, and I think more than anywhere else in the world there too, which is really special. That's right. 75% of the world's chameleons, and I think there's something like 200 species. 
there's 470 species of reptiles of which the chameleons are a big part of that. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but not by much. <laughs> James, I want you can tell the students if you want that the students in Toronto are also afraid of wasps. So everyone's agrees that the wasps. Are <laughs> I I'm the one who classically walk, walk, walks right into the wasp nest. Yeah. I also want to show you guys these. They're so beautiful. They've got all these different flowering plants, the heliconia, and these are just so cool. The the babies just start growing right out of the flower, and then the adult falls down, and they just keep growing and growing. I'm going to take some of those home with me today. <laughs> they've, they've got these trees that I love their seeds. Seed kind of looks like a Skittle. And it's got a fun name called Insa Kinsana because of the rattling sound it makes. It kind of sounds like it's going Insa Kinsana. Like they, they, they occur in these little things. And when they shake in the wind, they make a little noise. <laughs> How cool is that? So here's one of the trees they planted last year. Here they are planting and watering their tree. <laughs> and they tell the tree, grow. So we come back next time and see you big. What other questions do we have in the group? Or maybe oh, the so kids here have some questions. I, I did tell our classes too that if they get questions oh. after the fact, we'll make sure to get them all the answers. So please keep sharing those questions. Write them down somewhere and get them to us at our email. Um, yeah, please do. Yeah, a bit of the question about the climate. So Ms. Lynch's class, they wanted to know, is it stormy there? Is it in South African shores? Uh, anything you can tell us about the weather or what it's like in the region that you're in would be fantastic. Yes, it's a very tropical climate. Right now it's like 90 degrees with 90% humidity. And we're getting into the hot, dry season, which is not my favorite season. <laughs> um, but it, it, we are prone to hurricanes here. In this part of the world, they call them cyclones, but it's the same as we have you know, in the eastern part of the U.S. Um, and they get a, a cyclone almost every year that hits in the east coast. But it's kind of like, you know, Madagascar is the length of California. So it's kind of like the east coast of the U.S. You know, we, we can see hurricanes hitting from anywhere all the way down in Florida to lately all the way up in the northeast. But, um, you know, we're, we're also, um, maybe you guys have heard a little bit about El Nino and La Nina. We've just finished a La Nina season and we're getting into an El Nino season, which here is very hot and very wet. And we're a little worried that we might have more storms than usual during the El Nino, but let's f cross our fingers. <laughs> January, February, March is the cyclone season. That's the hot season. It can dump like 200 millimeters of rain in a day. <laughs> we had 50 here the other day, and that was like an epic deluge. So 200 is pretty incredible for one day. Yeah. Like that we're, we're checking out our giant mango tree together, too, which is very cool. Yeah, and this is a giant uh, bird's nest fern. The one, I was going to say, I'm so glad you're showing the plants, because some of the plants in Madagascar are so unlike anything our students would have experienced in Canada and the U.S. How cool is that? Um, yeah, and one of the things that I find really fascinating is, you know, when we talk to people about how they use trees, you know, the common answers that we always expect are like timber, and trees for their wood but actually medicine is one of the biggest uses of the trees in madagascar almost every single tree that i can think of people use it for medicine and it's really quite fascinating so it's kind of their pharmacy in the forest yeah and something that has been really interesting uh not just in madagascar but around the world is that one of the reasons that it's important to protect forests is that we do get a lot of our medicines from them a lot of the things that we take for granted regular drugs that you get you know at the counter any pharmacy in canada and the united states the medicines from those come from trees come from places where communities have been living with these trees for you know hundreds of thousands of years and have used them for medicinal purposes and so there's many reasons to protect the forest but that is one and i'm really glad you highlighted it um, yeah, that's they, exactly right. Our, our well, class, Ms. Lynch's class, wants to know if the kids have a favorite type of lemur that they want to share with us. I know we might be in the middle of a lesson, but if you're able to ask. Yeah. Yeah. There are some who said the dwarf lemurs. Some who say the ringtail lemurs, some who say the injury, 
And then this guy, his favorite is the woolly lemur, which I find really cool because it's very rare and it's only out at night. So he must be hanging out and, and checking out the wildlife at night a lot. He's not afraid of the forest. We were talking about all the animals he's seen in the forest and he's not afraid. Ah, oh, wicked. By the way, I want to note, like, we have a lot of kids here. If they have any questions for our kids across Canada and the U.S., we'd love to hear from them. They can ask literally yeah. anything, and I'll get questions answered in the chat. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, Mimishi Fontanea and I'm Nareo. Meti Nareo Tia Petrika Fontanea and I'm Ninamana and Daffy. It's on the other side, you love a banda. I can get both of them. It's from Tania. Tom Sampson in the Zari. Zari Kulam Telephone. Zari Kaifomi. Let me see. Uncle. They want to know, do we have lemurs abroad? Do we have lemurs in the U.S. or in Europe or Canada? I mean, our kids might have seen them at zoos in the, their lives. I mean, I've seen lemurs at the Toronto Zoo where I grew up. Um, any of our classes, I know we've got some classes in the general Toronto area, but like none out in the wild. You guys at the Duke Lemur Center have the closest thing to that, I think, in North America. Yeah, see me Maybe you guys can tell us your favorite animals. Oh, I love this. Well, we've been asking, of course, about these lemurs. So, Miss Lynch's class, Miss Lou, Miss Wong, Mr. Southward, if you guys want to type in the chat, or I can get to you and, and you can yell it out. Miss Lynch, if you want to unmute your mic, I'll come to you guys if you want to just say it out. Favorite animals. What do we got? Hey, unmute. Come chat with me live. Fox, bear, dogs. Fantastic. That's okay. Um, we have a come big variety of answers. Go ahead. Tom. Amazing. Bird. Yeah, Mr. Southward's class, I'm going to come to you guys. Do you want to yell it out? Hi, four or five, favorite animals. Favorite animals, go. Uh, uh, horses. 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 All these kids have dogs at home too. You know, they're the Yeah. 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 <laughs> I said, you know, I'm Bua, so Bisu. Bisu. Saka. Boos, yeah. We've got about half who say they like dogs, half they say they like cats. Seems an international divide. It's the classic thing. Are there other pets that the kids have? So dogs, cats? We talk about lemurs in the backyard. Any other animals they interact with on a daily basis? Well, man, akori ni fahita nareo in ni karazna bibi fiumpi tia nareo. We've been talking about domestic animals today, actually. In ni karazna bibi fiumpi ni shem nareo. Aku who? They have chickens. They have ducks. They have geese. He's got a cat, and he's got a cow. now. He's got two cows. Lahi savavi. They got one male, one bull, and one cow. Wow, it's not a big. And we were just talking today because uh, this is a little pilot project. you. You know, if I'm on the beach, she has a rabbit and she has a rabbit and we brought a rabbit today because rabbits are not very common here in this region. And we're trying to promote them as a, an alternative to keeping lemurs as pets because the lemurs are really, really cute and everybody loves them. So everybody likes to have one as a pet, but we're trying to teach that, you know, they're wild animals. They don't last very long in captivity. But a rabbit, chickens, ducks, things that they all already love are very good substitutes for keeping lemurs as pets, right? Yeah, misocha. Yeah, they all agree that they, they think it's better to leave the lemurs out in the forest and we can have rabbits and chickens and ducks and pigs. They have pigs. Oh, 
Many have pigs. Tada. I was going to ask a quick follow-up question, James, because I think it's important for our kids here to know. Uh, we talked about having cows. Uh, can you speak to how important cows are to Malagasy people in general? And I'm curious too, sorry, quick follow-up. Do the kids there know that we've got like 350 kids in on this? Because this is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, They're very happy to hear that over 300 kids tuning in just to meet them. Um, Mishi dikini ni umbi sa justa misomafo. Mish dikini. There is meaning to the cows. Who can tell us? Yeah. <laughs> we can eat them. <laughs> if you raise them well, you can have lots of them. And when they get big, you can sell them and they make us lots of money. <laughs> Once they get really, really big, we have big celebrations where we sacrifice zebu and we eat them. Very good. They make manure for us, which we use in our rice fields. Yeah, they are helpful in the agricultural fields. They're used to plow the fields. Nice. Yeah, they make very good compost with their manure. Very good for farming. And there, there are a lot of different cultural celebrations where it's traditional to sacrifice the cow in honor of the ancestors. Bravo, tell Bravo. Everybody knows the value of these cows. He says how important they are for the agriculture so that we have the compost and manure. They make our crops grow better, important trees that we plant. Very I good. Think he, I think he found a class ambassador, James. Like that guy is like into it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Westino. His name is Westino, and he's definitely our green ambassador for this, he this knows, lesson. Like, it, man. Um, James, time flies and you're having fun. We're nearing the end of the broadcast. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to highlight or showcase before we wrap up with all our classes. Of course, at the end, I'll bring in all our kids to say a big thank you and farewell on camera to all of your kids. Uh, but is there anything you want to leave us with in these last few minutes? Um, for, from my end, I just want to say thank you all again for your patience. I know it was hard to keep a good connection and, and, you know, I hope that, you know, Jesse, uh, I'm sure Jesse was giving really good information while we were, uh, trying to get the connection, but yeah, just one last happy world lemur day. Everybody get out there and do something for nature today and every day if you can. Uh, but especially today, if you don't know about lemurs, take some time and look them up because the first stage of about protecting them is to know about them and then if you're interested follow up with the duke lemur center or the toronto zoo there's lots of great projects involved with not only lemurs but other wildlife and uh, you know thank you again to our colleagues here miso chibesica ni ricardo candidia ertis directrix ni papiana chani anchisi job job in miso chenzinja thank you to everybody for participating and just remember that you know Every day for us is World Lemur Day and, and, and Earth Day, and just always try to get out there in nature. Amazing. Just asking if they have any last parting words. This is the principal of the school and some of the teachers?
ਬੋਮ ਤੋਂ ਬੈਲ ਚੱਲੇ ਸਿੰਘ ਦਾ ਜਲਦੀ ਪੰਜੀ ਟਮ ਲੈਫ ਕਰ ਕਰੰਗਲੇ ਸਕੂਲ ਸਕੂਲ ਮ ਤੁਨ ਚੁਲੀਏ ਨਗਾਈ ਸਾਰਾ ਜਨ ਨਗਾ ਬੇਸ ਨਜ਼ਰੀ ਹੰਗਾ ਫਜੇ ਖਲੀ ਕੋ ਲ ਕੰਗ ਪੈ ਤੰਦਰੀ ਜੇ ਮਾਫਨਾਰ ਸ਼ਮੀ ਸੋਚਸ ਦੇ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰਿੰਸੀਪਲ ਸੇਸ ਦੈਟ ਟੁਡੇ ਵਾਸ ਥੇਅਰ ਫਰਸਟ ਵਿਜ਼ਿਟ ਟੂ ਮਾਕੋਲੀਨ ਐਂਡ ਟੂ ਲਰਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਲੀਮਰਸ and that they really hope this is uh only the first but not the last that we really need to continue our collaboration and that they're very excited to continue to do more environmental education borai tumku de manjai za haiko and i agree we need to keep doing more activities especially here in this this part of uh of the sava it's a little bit farther from the big pristine rainforest like marojeji but there's small patches of forest that are really important they're still chock full of lemurs and they're also really important to people's lives because people depend on those forests so even if they're not uh you know the big national parks they're still really valuable to protect so we're going to work with these schools to do just that amazing this is something that a lot of our kids again local parks provincial parks state parks these are really important spaces get out in nature every day if you can it really does change your outlook on life um james thank you so much for this incredible opportunity with our classes as you know we bring in all our classes to say a big thank you and farewell uh extra exciting today because you guys did such an amazing job planting trees so i don't know if they can hear us through the phone but we're gonna have a few hundred kids in a minute just saying a big thank you and kudos for planting all those trees doing such great work for conservation thank you so much james and everyone duke lemur center thank Lemur's you thank you for more miss lewis class miss lynch's class miss wong mr severin thank you so much for being here everybody have a wonderful day guys thank you everyone thank you so much what a great day